In this video, we're going to explore the idea of collinearity in a numeric example. We've already discussed the concept of collinearity conceptually in a separate video, and now let's just explore how we can see collinearity showing up in a data set when we explore it in R. To do so, I'm going to work with this body fat percentage data. We've already encountered this a little bit earlier in another video, and we're just going to repeat what we did there and go a little bit deeper. So first I'm going to import this data, and I'm going to save it in something called BFP data. If we check the names of this data set, we can see we have the body fat percentage, that's our main outcome variable, as well as the age category, the height, the BMI, and average circumference, which is another measure of body size similar to BMI. For the sake of not getting things messy, I'm not going to attach the data, and I'll either work with the dollar signs or specifying the data that we're working with. Now for now, we're just going to explore what happens with BMI and with ABRIS. Before getting into it, I want to mention that conceptually we can think these variables should be pretty correlated. Right? They're both different measures of body size. BMI is a, a measure that the higher the number is, the bigger the body size is. Similar to ABRIS. So ABRIS is the circumference of your abs minus the circumference of your wrist. Okay, and again, as a body's larger, this value is going to get larger. So we can think of BMI and ABRIS as being body size measure A and body size measure B. These are two variables that are measuring almost the same thing or capturing similar pieces of information. Let's look at how these behave when they both end up in a model. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fit a model that uses only the BMI to predict body fat percentage. And so here I'm asking R, go into BFP data, find the BMI variable, and use that to estimate the body fat percentage, which is in the BFP data. I'm doing this all in one step, so I'm going to fit the linear model here, and then I'm going to ask for a summary of that, rather than saving the model in some object. And this is just because we're doing a quick demonstration and I want things to pop up on the screen right away. So let's fit that model and ask for a summary of it. We can see here, when we look at the BMI coefficient, hopefully this makes sense conceptually, as BMI goes up one unit, body fat percentage is going up by about 1.36. As BMI increases, body fat increases, which makes sense conceptually. And we can take note of the standard error, 0 0.09. Now, quick reminder, what do we say happens when we have two variables that are collinear? The coefficients get distorted, they get biased. They may not change, this coefficient may increase, it may decrease, but the standard errors tend to inflate. And just a quick side note here, rather than using the dollar signs, we could also fit a model that uses BMI to estimate body fat percentage and specify that the data we're working with is the BFP data. So just a different way of coding this up. Here, I'm going to fit a model that uses the ABRIS circumference to estimate body fat percent and specifying the data set that it's in. So just using that slightly different way and asking for a summary of that. Let's take a look at that here. Let's interpret this coefficient. When ABRIS increases by one unit, body fat increases by 0.656. Okay, again, conceptually this makes sense as ABRIS measurement gets larger, right, as our body size gets larger, body fat percentage increases. Okay, and the standard error of 0.03. Let's look at what happens when we include both those variables, BMI and ABRIS, in a model at the same time. And I want to take note of the standard errors, how those are going to get inflated. So just remember, the standard error for the ABRIS coefficient was 0.03, and the standard error for the BMI coefficient was 0.09, when put in a model on their own. Now, I'm going to fit a model that includes both BMI and ABRIS. Right? So these two variables that conceptually we said may be collinear or highly associated. Let's fit that model, ask for a summary of it. The first thing to note is the inflation of the standard errors. Remember, the standard error for ABRIS when it was just in the model on its own was 0.03. It's now 0.05. It's almost doubled. The standard error for the BMI coefficient when it was in the model on its own it was 0.08. Now it's gone up to 0.13. Again, it's increased by 50% or more, so inflation of those. So that's one way that we can identify collinearity numerically, as we see these standard errors getting inflated. One other thing worth noting is what happens to this BMI coefficient. BMI coefficient has changed. It's actually now become negative. And so what's going to be the interpretation of this coefficient? When BMI increases by one unit, body fat percentage decreases by 0.22. Okay, now that's clearly a biased estimate. As BMI goes up, body fat percentage should not be going down. Right? As the body gets larger in size, it shouldn't be having less fat on it. So what's happening numerically is the BMI and the ABRIS circumference, right? these are both measures of body size. In some sense, they're capturing the same effect. 
So what happens when we've put them both in a model is the effect of body size is shared amongst these two variables. And the way that can show up is they can split it. Half the weight can go to BMI, half can go to Everest. It could end up that all of them gets the weight. It could be that BMI gets all the weight and Everest shows up with a coefficient of zero or not being important at all. Or what's happened in this case is Everest has actually been overweighted. It's gotten more weight than it should. And BMI has been not only underweighted, it's actually a negative value. All of the body size effect and more is going into Everest. And again, we can see when Everest was in a model on its own, its coefficient was 0.65. Once we have BMI in there, once we have BMI in there, it's gone up to 0.73. So it's actually getting a little extra weight than it should at the expense of BMI getting a negative coefficient. So this is how we can see collinearity showing up numerically in a data set. It's important that we don't want to just check these numeric values and see our standard errors inflating, but does it make sense conceptually? Right? And it definitely does for us here. It definitely does make sense conceptually that BMI and average circumference are measuring the same thing, right? They're both measures of body size. And just to confirm that, let's look at the correlation between these two variables. Okay, we can see the correlation is 0.86, right? Again, they're both measuring the same thing. So this can cause a problem regardless of if our model is trying to measure the effect size of one variable on the outcome, or if we're just trying to build a predictive model. So there's lots of different solutions. We discussed some of them in the conceptual video, but the, the simplest approach is to choose one of these variables to include in the model and one to exclude. And how you make that decision is up to you. We discussed some of the approaches to making that decision previously.